circle of rap back and I'm going there leaving tracks in morning and I don't give a crap whether you stream or you torn this you can try to contest but you'll be needing an army beat them in Normandy current rappers heed to the warning so Hey, welcome to Three Count Commentaries. It's your host, Mongo Slate. So in light of uh, Mickey James and Maria Kanellis being Jane Jetsons and taking other people's money to spend on their personal political campaigns of all women's events, we get now Triple H being nagged once again about an all women's event. And this time he didn't give them the answer that they wanted. Triple H was kind of, he was kind of spicy in this uh, NXT call about criticisms of the brand, criticisms of the main roster, all this kind of stuff. Um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit of that. I'm going to talk about pretty much, well, I'm talking about the women's division first. Then we're going to talk about criticisms of NXT's um, branding. Um, so we're going to talk about the, you know, the, the, the important parts of the conference call, but we're going to start with the women first. Okay. So this is what Triple H had to say about people wanting an, an evolution show. This is this is very interesting. He says, haven't we already done them? It's funny to me. So equality is equality. Equality is not I want my own show. Equality is not we have to have our own program. If I told you that I was making an all men's program and I didn't want women on it, it would be criticized. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I do think it's funny when people go, I want the best in the world, regardless of contractual status. I'm sorry. From a business person standpoint, then why do we have contractual status, right? It doesn't make any sense to me. If you want to wrestle the best women in the world, come to WWE. That's where they are. If you want to go elsewhere and say that they are, you can. But it is what it is. I'm all for it. I was one of the biggest drivers of it. And I we will do an all another all-women's event down the line, possibly. But it's not a must-have in the moment. I think we do an amazing job of displaying our female athletes. Is it perfect? No. Will it always be in flux? Yes. But I think we do a pretty good job. But in my in my opinion, the best female performers in the world are in WWE. If not, they want to be. All right, so let's talk about this last part first because this was a very contentious piece of business that he says here. Because when he says that the best female performers are in WWE, and if not, they want to be, then we started seeing people, they started selling on Twitter. Um, I, there was, that that line alone was uh, retweeted a bunch of times. And you had Thunder Rosa and Deanna Perrazzo and so many other women who were uh, upset at the best pe female performers are in WWE. Qu quite a few of them. I'm not going to go through it because this video will probably be longer enough. So I'm not going to go through everybody's re response, but just know Deanna Perrazzo is a recent release of WWE. She was in WWE in 2020. She was let, she quit, I believe, because she just wasn't being used properly. Deanna Perrazzo is an excellent technician. Um, if you listen to me talk about Impact, I, she is the best person on the brand, but she does not have a superstar personality. She is not what WWE is looking for. Serena Deeb, the former uh, NWA Women's Champion, was a... Uh, trainer in WWE. She's another great technician, not a great character, you know, and that's what WWE is looking for. They're looking for characters larger than life, colorful, and those sorts of things. Serena Deeb and Deanna Perrazzo just does not meet the standard. But what about Thunder Rosa? You know, Thunder Rosa's response was kind of, uh, well, you know, nobody owns the best women's division in the world or whatever. Like, yeah, whatever. In any event, Thunder Rosa was... Um, she was contacted or she tried out for WWE. I forget which one. And um, they wanted her to be a referee, but this was years ago. So this was before anybody had realized how good she was. And she is sort of colorful. And I do enjoy Thunder Rosa, even though she's very small. But um, my thing is, if they sold as well in the ring as they do on Twitter, then they wouldn't have this problem. And they would have women's divisions all the time. People are just naturally sensitive. And Triple H got mad. So, well, they, well, they got mad, not Triple H. So the second point is that he, he says here, I was one of the biggest drivers of it. And we will do another all women's event down the line, possibly. But it's not a must have in the moment. In other words, is there going to be an evolution to maybe it maybe at some point in the future, there'll be another uh, women's evolution event. But it's not a must have in the moment. Okay, that's really what he should have said. Okay, he should have kind of left it at that. 
But I think he talked around it and then pissed off a bunch of people and then came back around and now they're pretty upset. I'm reading this off of Cage Side Seats, which is a pretty progressive site. And the comment section is an absolute, absolute cesspool of um, progressive brain rot about not knowing what equality means. Now, what, what they do is they, they have this debate. And I don't want to get too political on it. I just want to make, people, make sure people understand. They're having the equality equity conversation, right? The equality conversation are two things are the same. They're equal. The equity response is two things are not equal. They're inherently unequal. So you have to make them equal or you have to push things further along. Now, what they'll try to do is they'll try to say that it's for starters, it's an admission that two things aren't equal, right? You have to admit that, you know, women and men are not equal. If you say that women need extra help, you know, so that means you have to admit women in, are not equal to men, which, you know, is something that they don't, that, that they would deny if they have that conversation, but they use the old, the, the boxes, you know, you've probably seen the meme of, you know, not everybody is the same height. So some people need extra boxes underneath them. All right. That's an inherent admission that some people are unequal to others. You can't make the argument that people are equal while also making the argument that they're also unequal. And because they're unequal that you need to help. If I say that two things are equal, then I don't need to do anything to equate them. They're equal by being what they are. If I have to put my finger on the scale to make them equal, then they're not equal. So when Triple A says equality is equality, equality is not I want my own show. Equality is not we have to have our own program. He is absolutely correct. You know, now what other people will argue is, well, and this was the comment sections argument. The, a lot of the big, bigger argument was people talking about there's fewer women on the roster, so they get less time and that they need to increase the number of women on the roster to increase, increase the women's time. And then, of course, you know, because people are saying the women are getting um, positions in proportion to their relation to the roster. So if there's eight women on Raw, but they are all featured every week, then they're out, um, they're being used beyond the proportion of them that is on the show, which is true. Because if you look at the women's, um, the, the roster of men and women on Raw, you regularly get Alexa Bliss and Charlotte and Rhea and Asuka. They're on the show pretty much every week, but they're pretty much the only ones that are on the show every week. But then you have a large glut of male wrestlers that are not featured every week. That's why Andrade quit, right? Because he was not being featured on the show. They were featuring Lana every week. They weren't featuring Andrade every week. Nobody kind of thinks about that. No, they were featuring Alexa Bliss every week. You know, Ricochet is sitting and catering. A lot of people didn't don't really think about that and don't talk about it. And this is where you get into the, the Chinese finger trap of dealing with the progressives on the internet. It's because they're so happy and they say WWE has this bloated roster. They have all these guys. They should fire people. And then when they start firing people, it's, oh my God, you fired these guys. What are you doing? It's, hey, you have, you know, all of these women on the roster. You should focus on them. And then when you do, you're not focusing on the men. And then you complain about all of these guys sitting and catering. You say that the roster is bloated. But if you don't focus on the women and you do focus on the men, then it's sexism. And, you know, they should stop doing that too. It is a, a finger trap. That no matter how much you tug and pull, you're stuck in this position. That no matter what people do, they will complain. Right? There's just going to be folks nagging you all the time. And I haven't heard anybody mention that. That the entire nine weeks that they were fe featuring on Alana's storyline, Andrade was nowhere to be seen. And nobody said anything. Nobody said anything about, hey, maybe we should feature Andrade or Angel Garza. Why the hell do we got uh, Lana on the show every week? Why are they showing uh, vignettes for Eva Marie when they could be taking that time to build up storylines for some of the underutilized men? Nobody say anything about that. People just kind of say, OK, well, they're kind of doing that. You know, we got to see Charlotte wrestle Oscar for the 45th time. And sure, sometimes people will say, where's Naomi? You know, where is so-and-so? Where is so-and-so? And that's true, you know? But there's always going to be people that are underutilized. You know, it's all about who that person is going to be. 
at what given time. And things are never going to be perfect because, and, then, and I started with this, it's easy to say what other people do with their money. You know, here's how the complaints about NXT and the complaints about the women's division is, is a personal one. It is, they are not doing what I would do. You know, that's their opinion. Here's what I would do if I had the money that Triple H has, if I had the, the talent that Triple H has, this is what I would do. And then you would disenfranchise all these other people because you cannot quantify how much time any individual person needs to get over because some people don't need that much time to get over. Some people need more time to get over. Like I said, I was talking about Deanna Perazzo and Serena Deep. They're good technicians. You cannot appreciate what they do in a short amount of time, right? But are you going to dedicate 10 minutes to Serena Deep on television and risk losing viewers just so you can say that you did it? Because that's really what you're asking for with the Evolution show. You're saying, oh, you guys should just go and do the show. If it loses money, so what? It's like, that's somebody else's pocketbook you're talking about here. And then you'll be talking about TV ratings going down. And then you'll be talking about they're not making any new stars. They're not doing anything. So while it's a slam dunk to say women main event at WrestleMania, you know, this year, Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, they co-main event at the next WrestleMania, which, uh, which was Rhea Ripley and Oscar. I think they were in the second to last spot. There have been several storylines featuring Alexa Bliss, who has been one of the main stars of WWE since September, maybe even before that. Well, definitely before that. You know, I'm talking about before she, you know, when she really got moved out of the tag team division and moved into the storyline with The Fiend. She's been a focal point of the show for months. I didn't know Lexa Bliss stopped being female. You know, Charlotte, people complain that Charlotte is overused and she's overexposed and all this kind of stuff. Then you've got Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. They were on all three brands. You know, Sasha Banks and Bayley last year were on all three brands, getting a lot of television time during the pandemic. But because WWE won't do an evolution, then all of a sudden, well, they're not featuring the women's wrestling the way that we, we want it to. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. Okay. They have been featuring the, the women a lot. It may, it may not be uh, showing, showcasing a diversity of the women as far as showing all of them all the time. But there's been plenty of women that are pushing SmackDown and Raw forward. And of course, NXT, which Triple H is absolutely responsible for. Because Triple H made the women's division and all that kind of stuff possible by actually turn, changing how they were trained. So when he says that, you know, um, I was at the forefront of that, he was absolutely correct. Look at NXT. There's regularly female main events on NXT. But, you know, it's, it's what have you done for me lately? Not, you know, and I think that we've, they, people have gone from there not being any women's matches on the show at all to now there's two or three women's matches on, on, on every show. But that's not enough. So it's never going to be enough. So to be at that point, you just kind of have to just do your own thing. But that was just one of the, uh, of the responses that he got for uh, making a big deal out of NXT. Another one that he got, he, he got kind of pissed off about was people saying that they were that NXT guys or a criticism of the brand is that when people are moved up to NXT, they are often quote unquote misused. So here's what triple H had to say. One way of looking at it is misused. And the other way is that they don't always pan out. There are players that play in the NFL. They pay, they play college football and people can't wait for them to get to the NFL. And when they get to the NFL, it doesn't work out and it doesn't pan out. You can say a team misused them or mismanaged them or the coach of the team they play for didn't put them in the right role. It could be a million reasons. It could also be that sometimes talent doesn't fit in a particular place or talent got to a particular place and that was the end of their growth curve. Sometimes it doesn't work. There are a lot of factors. That, is, that too is also true, right? There's a lot of people who benefited greatly from NXT, namely Shinsuke Nakamura and Finn Balor. They benefited greatly from being big fish in a small pond. They came to NXT. There weren't that many stars in NXT. So when they came in, they got to be the biggest star on the brand. Or very quickly, they became the biggest star on the brand because everyone who was there before them was leaving. 
But now NXT has changed and those people aren't leaving anymore. Therefore, you're bringing in new people. And it's a, it's a mad dash to try to put them somewhere. Triple H is having the same problem Vince had. Aleister Black was talking about this in his uh, Twitch channel. He talked about being released. And people were like, how can it be that Vince McMahon liked you and you got fired? And he was saying, like, you know, when you go from NXT to Raw or NXT to SmackDown, Vince has to try to put you somewhere. Where do he put you? In relation to people that already exist. You know, this is not a situation where it's like NXT, where you can just come in and in two or three months be in a top spot because you got momentum. Kevin Owens went straight to the main event of NXT. You know, he came in, went straight to the main event because he was a big indie superstar. Nobody cares that he was a big indie superstar when he goes from NXT to SmackDown or NXT to Raw because John Cena is there. Randy Orton is there. The Undertaker is still there. Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns are there. All these other people are already there. So he has to share time with them and they're much bigger stars than he is. He's going to get, they're going to get more time than him. It's going to be a more difficult curve and people should understand that. And they should have, if they put just a modicum of thought into it, you would see that and it would make perfect sense. And he basically, Alistair Black is basically saying, Hey, they liked me, but they didn't know where I fit in relation to everyone else. You know, where does he fit? in relation to like Roman Reigns and at the time he was pushing Cesaro and Big E trying to get a big push. And you're also trying to make a star out of Apollo Crews, but you're also trying to reestablish Bianca Belair and you're trying to establish Bailey. Sasha Banks has been off TV. So that's been helping as far as the women is concerned, but you have other people that you're trying to build and other things that they're trying to do. How do you fit him into this? And they was able to do that via the vignettes because the vignettes were not long. But when it's now time to start doing more than that, it becomes, okay, well, now what do we do? Now, I still think that, you know, him getting fired is some bullshit, but I do understand where he was coming from when he said, look, we have to try to find somewhere to put you. You know, you have to find a place. You have to work your way into a place. And it's hard to do because you've got all of this stuff that people are talking about already. Where, and like I said earlier, Andrade couldn't be featured if you have to feature Nia Jax, you have to feature Lana, you have to feature Naomi, you have to feature all of these women who are less talented than Andrade, but because they have vaginas, you have to put them on TV at some point, or people are going to complain there aren't enough vaginas on TV, then you got to do it. So that means somebody is going to have to sit in catering. So they chose Andrade to sit in catering, and now people are mad that Andrade was sitting in catering. That's the way of the world. There's only so many hours. Even if there's three hours, there's only so many hours. There's only so many spots. There can only be so many people. And you can say, well, they, they just have too big of a roster, which is partly true. But at the same time, if you want to look at a business proposition, why would you have people on the roster who don't make you money? So, you know, you, then you have to start looking at who doesn't make money. Who's the least effective in drawing viewers? Nine times out of 10, that would be the women. With the exception of a handful, most of them are, are not television ready or are not TV draws. But they still have to push them because they're women. You know, and that's just kind of how it is. And it's the same thing with tag teams. It's the same thing with the cruiserweights. That's why the cruiserweights have their own show. But I am a, a big opponent a big proponent rather, not an opponent, a proponent of women having their own show. I think there should be a 205 live for the women's division. I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, I think there should be a May Young classic every year. I don't see anything wrong with that. Should there be an evolution pay-per-view? I don't think they want to put that kind of money into it, but if they did want to do an evolution pay-per-view, here's how I would do it. And this is me personally. I would build up the evolution show to be Becky Lynch's return show. That, that, that would be the, the entire draw. Becky Lynch is coming back from having her baby. She's going to wrestle somebody she's never wrestled before on this show, build up the storyline for a few months. And then that's what you, and you know, you put it in front of an arena and that's what you, you see if that'll draw, you know, you may, maybe bring in some women who aren't doing anything to make it a big deal. Of course, NXT UK, NXT, yada, yada, yada. And it could be, it could be okay. But just doing evolution shows every year, no, it doesn't make any sense. And he's right about that. 
But um, to me, a lot of this stuff is all about roster management and human resources and a bunch of other shit that people are not used to having to deal with and don't know how to deal with because they've never been in that position. So you have a paradox that Triple H is involved with where he's supposed to make money for the company. So he can't do things. Otherwise, they'll shut the brand down. So NXT was a money loser for a long time. But the difference between then and now was it was seen as being a prep, uh, preparation for the future. So it was kind of like research and development and a big pharma corporation. It's like you have to spend this money to train people and do all this kind of stuff. You know, but the roster was the NXT roster was kept small for that reason, because it was a money loser. But then as NXT started to make more money, they started to expand the roster. But expanding the roster means that now there are certain people who aren't being used. And now the people who aren't being used are being shuffed off to 205 Live or they're, not, or they're being used as jobbers and or they're just standing around in the performance center hitting the weights. That kind of stuff started to happen as NXT started to grow. But of course, it's not going to be, it's not ever going to be perfect. But if he gets to the point where NXT is losing money again, he's going to have to cut the roster. He's going to have to sh shrink everything again, which is going to limit opportunities. These things are, it's, it's, it's basic economics and it's basic understanding of you can't run a business like a political campaign. In a political campaign and using other people's money, you can say whatever you want. But until you're actually in that position and until it's actually your money and your responsibility, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. Now, if I was Shine or Shimmer or wow women of wrestling or something like that i will be grinding my teeth because they have been running women's only promotions for years and nobody cares it's, it's easier to nag ring of honor or wwe or impact into doing it than it is to support the people that already exist because there are full promotions already uh that that do women's wrestling nobody cares so that should tell you that this is mostly politically motivated but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, donate to the channel if you can via the tip jar, which would be the cash app. Or if you feel better doing so via subscribe star, please do that too. And um, thank you guys. And I'll talk to you guys later. I can only be